breakfast. <laughs> and breakfast. <laughs> and breakfast means morning here at Business Garden Inn and Suites and Hotel Room Inn. Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times SNL hosts broke character. More than perfect. Allow us to engage the Concord then. I wish they had something higher than first class. Please. For this list, we'll be looking at the funniest times our favourite stars just couldn't keep it together on Saturday Night Live. If we missed any of your favourite flubs, let us know in the comments below. Number 10, Justin Timberlake, Barry Gibb Talk Show, Bee Gees Singers. If anyone has proven themselves to be an SNL all-star, it's Justin Timberlake. To join the Five Timers Club, you can't be a slouch in the comedian department. Welcome to the Five Timers Club. We've been expecting you, Mr. Timberlake. Wow. A smoking jacket? Uh, please. But even Five Timers fall sometimes. In one of Timberlake's earlier performances on the show, he did a skit with Jimmy Fallon titled The Barry Gibb Talk Show. In this skit, Fallon plays the titular Gibb, taking on the singer's signature falsetto and speaking voice. By the fact, do you think this is kind of half pound California politics <laughs> as a whole? As Barry's brother Robin, Timberlake is hilarious, but sometimes has a hard time, understandably, keeping a straight face at Fallon's antics. The face he makes to try and keep himself from laughing is one for the books. Uh, <laughs> <have it. laughs> you have anything to have? <laughs> Number nine, Janet Jackson, Cork Soakers. To Janet's credit, it's pretty hard to watch this sketch and not crack a smile. This is where the final step in the bottling process happens, where we prepare all the corks <clears throat> for all the bottles of Brunello that you saw earlier. Jimmy Fallon, Horatio Sands, and other members of the SNL cast play a group of Italian winemakers who are teaching a group of tourists about their craft. I've always actually wondered about that. How do you <clears throat> cork the bottles? Excellent the question, my Bella. Through the sketch, they all take turns saying the words cork soaker multiple times in very thick Italian accents. We'll give you a few moments to figure out what that sounds like. I love a soaking a cork. <laughs> I could have soaked a cork all night long if they let me. <laughs> I would have soaked two corks at once. <laughs> Janet plays one of the tourists and breaks character as she's asking the winemakers how they learned to soak corks. So how did you learn to soak? Corks. <laughs> so corks. She flops a bit, starts to giggle, and things just devolve from there. Number eight, Emily Blunt, Escorts. You'd think a star like Emily Blunt would have hosted Saturday Night Live multiple times, so you might be surprised to learn the actress only has one hosting gig under her belt so far. But I did get, get to improv a few little things, like, you know, the part where I said, uh, it's, it's me, you know, that, that, was, that was improvised. She did a wonderful job by our standards, but there was one skit where she sort of lost her cool. In a skit called Escorts, Blunt and cast member Leslie Jones play two escorts who get very specific about what they will and will not do. I will kiss, but only with this amount of tongue. <clears throat> <laughs> or, is your tongue out? Yes. Blunt mostly keeps it together through the first part of the sketch, but there's a moment towards the end where she has to fake a fall. She pops her head over the couch to say her line, but just can't stop a giggle fit from taking over. Oopsie doopsie, I mucked it up again! <laughs> Number 7, Larry David, New Wife. Veteran comedians are known for their ability to keep character, no matter how funny the situation. So it's a wonderful but rare treat when someone like Larry David can't help but laugh at a sketch. I got married this past weekend. You did what? I met and married a wonderful woman. She's opened up a whole new world to me. David was a writer for SNL during its 10th season and came back years later to play Bernie Sanders during season 41. But it was during one of his hosting stints that he caught a case of the giggles. In a skit called New Wife, David introduces his friends to his very young new wife, played by Cecily Strong. Yeah, you guys can come, but you gotta bring three friends and they have to be either buff, cute, or rude. Two out of three. The skit plays on someone as old as Larry David, having to say ridiculous hip lingo, and he seems just as tickled by it as the rest of us. Is everything okay? <laughs> you got some mad. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
I took, I took my prep on an empty stomach. Number six, Jamie Foxx, Main Justice. Saturday Night Live has had some pretty strange running skits over the years, but one of the oddest has to be Main Justice. Okay, y'all take a seat. Y'all take a seat right here, right now. SNL veteran Justin Timberlake once starred in this sketch, but today we want to honor Jamie Foxx's turn. The sketch itself is absolutely ridiculous. The people in a courtroom in Maine act like they're from the Louisiana Bayou, confusing a character who's from out of town. Hey, what the hell is going on here? Okay, all right now. Okay, here we go now. If we're being honest, Jason Sudeikis' accent alone would have probably made us laugh way earlier in the sketch, so kudos to Fox for holding on as long as he did. But there's one particular quote at the end that involves the word swamp and butt, and Fox just can't keep it in. I have to time up to Uncle Orville's airboat and drag his bare lily white butt across the swamp to pull out that ass fire. <laughs> 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 Number five, Billie Eilish, Hotel Ad. When a host doesn't have a lot of comedy chops under their belt, it's easy to see why some of the skits that Saturday Night Live writers come up with might throw them off their game. So is the case for Billie Eilish, who hosted the show in 2021 and did surprisingly well for a first time host, especially one so young. Our rooms provide every comfort required by law. <laughs> Tiny soap and plastic, phone that blinks. One of her best skits was Hotel Ad, in which Eilish lent her impeccable monotone voice to a very strange and off-putting commercial for a hotel. Want to see the local sights? Ask our concierge, Doreen. But be warned, she's having a hard month every month. But unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, Eilish couldn't hold that deadpan tone for long, especially not next to the very hilarious Kate McKinnon. Situated between the DMV and a darkened Sonic, it's the location that will make your Uber driver say, you sure? <laughs> Number four, Margot Robbie. Actress Round Table. Sometimes a skit hits a little too close to home. On Margot Robbie's only time hosting the show so far, one of the skits she did was a spoof of an actress's round table discussion, featuring Robbie doing a fairly good Kira Knightley impression. Thank you. Actually, so great to be here supporting women in film. The other cast members are also playing younger, real actresses, all except for Kate McKinnon, who is playing a fake actress named Debette Goldry, who is much older older and worked during the golden age of Hollywood. It's a pleasure to be alive. <laughs> the gag is that while all the younger actresses give standard, fairly boring answers, Debette tells totally wacky, often inappropriate stories from long ago in her career. Poor Robbie has a tremendously hard time not laughing at her, but hey, it's hard not to laugh at Kate McKinnon. You girls know <laughs> No, we don't. Is that a thing that happened? <laughs> Number three, Sean Hayes, Jeffries. Not many actors are well known for a singular character as Sean Hayes is, but Jack from Will and Grace is one of the most indelible sitcom characters of all time. Okay, okay, that's interesting. You'd think maybe you could have told me this, oh, I don't know, before I packed up my entire life. So it makes sense that Hayes would be given a character semi-similar to Jack on his Saturday Night Live stint in 2001. Think Jack but a little more hipster. In this skit, Hayes and Jimmy Fallon play a couple of sales clerks at a store called Jeffries, who mock and belittle every customer who comes in. What? This is a genuine Looney Tunes jacket. <laughs> Wow, I didn't know Joey Buttafuoco had a garage sale. Hayes mostly keeps it together during the skit, but when Will Ferrell rolls in on a motorized scooter, well, that's the end of Hayes' straight face. We're going to the Dolce & Gabbana <laughs> show. How fast can you have your bags packed for Milan? Number two, Kevin Hart, Barnes & Noble firing. And once again, we get a veteran comedian who can't quite keep it together. But to Kevin Hart's credit, this Barnes & Noble sketch is one of the funniest the show has produced in its later years. Hart plays a manager at a Barnes & Noble store who has to fire one of his employees. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to let somebody go today. Yeah, right! Oh, what? We know you think it's us! Yeah, you nerds hate us because we work in a cafe! 
thinking they're on the chopping block, Cecily Strong and Bobby Moynihan begin insulting their co-workers within an inch of their lives. Brayton! Oh! Why do you always look so wet? Why? <laughs> do, you, do you hatch out of an egg every morning? These two are hilarious, but Tim Robinson is who finally gets Hart to crack. During one of Hart's lines, Robinson pops up behind him without warning, causing him to break character and let out a quick laugh. I would never find any person in this room Except the car. Oh no. <laughs> Except the car. Where's the bear? He's old, he's useless. He's just that good to me. So, Carl. Sorry, Carl. You gotta go. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one. Ryan Gosling, Close Encounter. When you make Ryan Gosling break character this badly, the only choice is to do it again. And that's exactly what Saturday Night Live did. Yes, you three experienced the first verified case of alien abduction, so naturally you are of great interest to the United States government. When Ryan Gosling first appeared in the Close Encounter sketch, there was no way we could have known just how iconic this appearance would come to be. The sketch portrays three people who are abducted by aliens and asked to tell the government about their experience, and marks another instance of Kate McKinnon making people absolutely lose. It. Were these beings also bathed in light? Uh, no, no, they were uh, gray with big fat eyes, little mouths. They just uh, stared while I peed. As soon as she gets going, Gosling is absolutely down for the count. He tries to hide behind his hand, but nothing can hide that smile. So I had to just chill up there with my damn coot coot and prune shoe hanging <laughs> until the place opened up. Gosling later reprised the sketch, but nothing is as good as the original. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.